Aloha, welcome to Living Delicious with Helena. Part of a delicious life is fun and music. Today we have a music producer and a songwriter who actually writes delicious music. Music to inspire you, uplift your spirit and make you feel really good. This is my guest, Joseph Williams. Hi, Joe. Hi, Miss Helena. Hi, nice to have you on the show. Thank Welcome. You for me. Thank you. So, you write delicious music. I do. I music guess so. about what? Food? No, not delicious food. I guess you could you could use the music while you're cooking. I'm sure that would be good. Yes. But um, no, it's uh, I like to write inspiring and positive music, and it's part of the reason why I'm, I'm here today is connecting with you. You know, and you're. Uh, the law of attraction of everything, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I really enjoy writing about the positive things in, in life and sharing those through music, you know, the message. So how um, did you get inspired for that? Um, well, as a kid, I um, went through a couple tough things, you know, I mean, I think we all go through kind of some tough uh, times in our lives, mm -hmm. and uh, most of my, my music seems to be steered towards uh, relationships, you know, which I know you're really big in. I remember seeing your video where you were out giving free hugs, oh, yes. and I was like, I've got to meet this woman. She's <laughs> incredibly energy. And I, yes. remember, I remember being in Waikiki a few years ago and trying to overcome my own social anxiety and just approaching strangers. I'd say, I'm going to approach 10 strangers today. Yes. And I'm just going to say hi to them. You know? If it's a woman, I might tell her she's pretty. You know? So I would just say, I'd interrupt people, say, hey, stop. I just wanted to meet you. My name's Joe. Hi. Of course, sometimes, yeah. you know, you're kind of odd about it, but it's mm -hmm. those moments that I tried to capture and inspire other people to do with music, you know. I believe that music is a very powerful tool, and when people listen to it, I, I, I hope that those ideas flow through the music to inspire them to connect with other people. But if you had hard times in life, don't you want to write about injustice in the world and the destruction and, you know, I hate my life kind of songs? Yeah, and that's it's what I first started off doing. I think that's what a lot of people wind up doing mm -hmm. is because uh, it's a very rare type of person, a ter personality that finds joy in life. You know, a lot of it's very hard for us, you know, mundane life. And uh, I found that that I did write songs about those. But okay. luckily I didn't reach a point in knowledge about how music worked and the industry's changing and how to get it out to people. Um, I didn't get to that point uh, until I realize the light. I saw the light, you know, uh, getting rid of all that junk and just realizing it's just junk, you know. When someone's mad at me, just give them a hug, you know, and let that positivity flow, you know. Wow. So Positive. how old were you when you started? I was 14 when I first started playing guitar. Uh, before that, I've always been into art and painting and, and whatnot, but I just transferred my, uh, my creativity over to guitar when I was 14 years old. My parents divorced uh, when I was 14, mm -hmm. and that became my that became my drug. You know, it became uh, a lot of people go through tough times when they go through that situation. I was addicted to my guitar. You know. But didn't you have so. pain in your, you know, oh, the fingertips? Oh, I did. Yeah, my, my fingertips are still to this day after 14 years of playing, are still calloused. Wow. So. So so yeah. don't did you want to give up at that moment? Like I'm done with this guitar. Let me do something easier. When it gave me pain. Yes, give me some something to smoke or. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, no, that's, that's exa actually it ties into a, a lot of other things is that what I realized through the songwriting process and through anything that you bring into this world create, creatively, there's an element of pain with it. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, when you, you give your hugs, you know, that's, uh, I can see that there, the value that comes from that most likely would have been because we've all experienced pain. You know how good it felt when maybe you just needed someone to put a, your head on your shoulder, you know, mm -hmm. or someone just needed a hug and you you empathize with people and so when your cup is overflowing you now just want to give it to other people whereas before you know you were little old me you yes, know yes, yes. so yeah so what kept you inspired um motivate first motivation was your inner creativity yes and then your parents divorce and you just focused into creating uh, things yeah I, th I think the the number one thing that uh is challenging is a lot of kids when they're when they're in the teenage years, or at least from 14 to 17, uh, I gave guitar lessons for a good four years, and that was tend to be my age range was 14 to 17. I'd say about 80% of my students were uh, in that range, and it was most of the time their parents just wanted to drop them off, almost like a babysitter, like, you know, like hey, just give them give them a guitar lesson. I want them to learn guitar. Where 
it, it generally comes with someone's love with music. You can't make them learn the music. You know, you can't just mm -hmm. sit down. What's the saying? It says uh, you can put a man through college, but you can't make him learn. Yes. You know, the similar kind of thing. And so it was that that inspired me uh, was to see that music could be used as a tool to accelerate your mind and, and to use creative ways of thinking instead of looking at what this present moment may be. Maybe I'm going through a bad day or my, my parents are divorcing or my friends this or my job this. Um, uh, you're able to, with the music, I believe it trains your mind to seek other ways to be creative, to try and change the current moment. So what do you write about? Um, this, the current album I released on Valentine's Day uh, is primarily about my growth in relationships. Meaning there is a girl behind the, yes. the most inspired, okay. Yes, yes. Um, I, th I think that relationships are the number one inspiring uh, element of art, you know. And it's mostly my journey from understanding how to be a, a non-social boy, I guess maybe 16, 17 years old when I was finishing songs. And I was like, you know, I want to conquer my dating life. I want to, I want to overcome these anxieties. Instead of walking down the street and seeing a beautiful woman and whispering to my buddy, man, look, she's so pretty. I want to be able to go and talk to her. Ooh, that's um, scary. Yeah, I want to be able. I want to be able to express myself. <laughs> okay. You know, without uh, without any anxiety, and just live free in the world. Live delicious. You know? <laughs> so, and that's that's the the thing that inspired a lot of the album is that. Um, Many different relationships uh, was the album that was created. And so the, the title of the album is You Are Me. And what that means, I wanted to ask you, You Are Me. Yeah, I've had a, lot, a few questions about that. Mm -hmm. um, through, my, through my own personal spiritual studies and just about, uh, um, you, you find elements, and no matter what uh, thought process we go through, that they all have an element of seeing yourself in another person. I, I believe. Uh, a lot of them have the mirror concept, you know, seeing your uh, person as a mirror, you know. And I, I was dating a, a very beautiful woman once. We were dating for about a month, and it just something clicked when we were, we were, we had a moment, and I saw my reflection in her eyes, and in I think, other we, words, I think we were. You saw your own beauty. Yeah, yeah, but it was yeah, it was very transcendent. It was like wow, you know, like I, I'm here. I'm that pretty. Wow, I didn't yeah. know. I'm cool, <laughs> pretty Joe. <job. laughs> Uh, you know, and, and I almost like left the dinner right there. I was like, we got to get going home. Like, I, and I was recording the, the ideas in my head. And I finally got home, and the, the poor girl, I, I was like, I, I have to get this idea out. I have to get this, this song out of my system. And anybody who's into songwriting and music, they understand that when you have a moment, you have to capture it. And this concept, You Are Me, came through, and that was my single that was released on iTunes, was uh, You Are Me. And it's just a song about um, no matter what goes on in our lives, if you just imagine that, you know, hey, this, this person on the street that's looking for a job or this person over here that's walking on the street busy on a cell phone or my mother who calls and just have, having a bad day, that each one of those people are you. And by you taking time to listen to them or taking the time to maybe help them out or taking the time to uh, have compassion for them, you're actually helping yourself. You know, you're helping the rest of people. You know, you're helping each other. And so that's the, the scope of the album. Uh, and it kind of builds on that. That was the, the, the climactic part of the album was, was about my growth as a, as a boy being, some of the songs in there about, you know, uh, lust, you know. Uh, I remember one of the songs is called I Want to Feel You. And, but it's about I want to feel you on every level, you know. And I remember this girl, I was so nervous to talk to her. I, mean, I, was, I was 18 years old. So nervous to talk to her. Pretty girl. She was like 24, older woman too. <laughs> So I was even more nervous, and I just I got in my little home studio, a little computer, and wrote this song, and I was so nervous to give it to her, but I just walked right up to her, and here you go, and I walked away. And you didn't and say you wrote it for her? Yeah, she knew. She knew? She knew, and it started a year-and-a-half relationship. So, ah. But I've learned to not hide behind that, you know, so uh, there's a lot more to life than just hiding behind an instrument. It's just a tool, after all, you know. So you can actually do music and dating coaching. Yes, that's what I've been getting into for a while. So, uh, you know, I, I find it... So you know your game? Yeah, I guess you could say that. I mean, not that I know it. I don't want to sound boisterous or anything. It's just, you know, I feel, I feel comfortable in my life with, you know, approaching people, strangers, and um, navigating the dating realm, you know. Oh. It's always, there's always an element you got to act like you know everything because it, it's always going to come back at you. But, you know, they get, I, I feel comfortable enough to help my friends out. Good, know, good, so. good. So if you were to perform a song here... Mm -hmm. Which one would you choose for tonight? 
Uh, I would, it would be, uh, it's above. It's and above? I chose that one in particular because after watching your show and, and getting to know you a little bit uh, and your videos online, and it seemed to be that song that really spoke to about your, just your character and the way you, you feed through. The you song know. about me or about the people and delicious living? The delicious living. Good. It's about that as well, but you're, you're the, the carrier of the message, you oh. know. Now so. we will hear the song about me. I'm very there excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the inspiration for the song was before you met me, of course. Yes, yes. How did that happen? Uh, I believe I was, I just got into Hawaii. I was 19 years old. I had just gotten here and I was just infatuated. I'm a, I'm a farmer boy from Iowa, you know. So I got here when I was 19. I was so infatuated with rainbows and everything. It's such a beautiful place. And the song speaks to about, uh, some of the lyrics are, love, it's above. It's above it all. And it was just that whole concept, you know, everywhere you go, the Aloha spirit, mm -hmm. you know, the, everything it just spoke to. Uh, every, no matter what happens in our life, just love, it's above, you know. I heard it online. Studio version. Did you like? Very much. I listened to it several times over and over because it's very like a singy. Yeah, yeah. You can yeah. sing along. And now I'm really curious how it sounds in acoustic. Yeah, it should sound pretty good. Okay, so let's do the song. All right. Okay, we'll be back with the song. It's a Above the trees, it's in your head when you're sleeping, in your thoughts when you dream, and everything is all right now. I know because that's a gummy bottle back somehow. Never thought a spot could get me through the clouds, then I swam through the air and I finally got out. No living in a dream that makes me want to shout. This feeling inside it tells it all about. Time used to pass without leaving a trace. Fame addicted scenes, but fate took place. But it did now because the smile took shape and it dies inside, and I never had to wait. It's always raining. This won't hurt. And right now there's no lie me too much real and fake. So close your eyes and pretend being real is what you make. Cause with the you and going down the road, flying high through the sky, trying just to get home. Time spent here will be locked in our heads. The photographs to memory, just your words instead. So take a picture of me with a sparkle in your eye. Keep you safe inside to satisfy your mind. It's always raining in my head.
awesome. Thank you. Wow. I actually love this acoustic style. Yeah, better in the studio, you think? I don't know, better. This is just maybe because I'm with you, I feel in it. Oh, it's thank you. awesome. It's good. I hope so. Thank you, guys. Thank so, you. how did you become a team? What happened? Uh, well, I know Mariah from. Uh, we all know each other. Friends up in Kailua. Yes. And uh, I've always known Mariah to be a very artistic singer, and and she's always mm -hmm. into drawing, and, and uh -huh. so I always keep these kind of people in my in my life. I try to. And, and Kale, he's an amazing drummer. He's always been drum circles, hosting drum circles up in Kailua. So oh, really? Yep. If anybody's ever up for drum circles, they're always going on up in Kailua. Yeah. Uh, Thursday nights. So, and uh, when this, when I released my album on Valentine's Day, I just started trying to put people together for, you know, pushing the message out and to help me, you know. So, so thanks to these guys, incredible people. So thank you guys. But during the break, when we were doing the setup, you said that on the album it's only you. Yes. So you are doing everything, yes. playing every instrument, and all these hundreds of vocals. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a. Uh, it's a crazy thing that's happening in the music industry. A lot of it's not really marketed as such, but uh, uh, from a producing aspect, when you get to know the, the mystery behind the magic of these musicians, uh, a few to name, uh, Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails, huge success since 1993, I believe, and uh, most recently, Owl City. Uh, these guys are the, the, the masterminds of the project, and they just they geek out in their home studios and, and layer upon layer and just try and, and put their, their song together. And then when the album's produced, uh, they typically hire people to go on tour with them. So it seems like it's a big five-piece band or a three-piece band, but a lot of times there's usually one guy that's behind the message, you know. That's typically what's been happening ever since the Beatles even, you know, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. This is amazing because the studio version sounds like there is some female voices there. Yeah, that's, that's, this, that's this guy. <laughs> yeah. So you can make your voice really high and really low. Well, I'm not going to do it for you here, but uh, <laughs> so I go falsetto, you know, the high, high pitch voice and, and, yeah, at certain points to accent. You know, what Mariah was, was pointing out in the song, those yeah. are the exact harmonies that was done in the studio. Exactly. So. That's why I was surprised when you said that you did it yourself. Like, wow, female yeah. voice. This guy sounds like a guy or a girl. <laughs> the Prince, he did it, you know. Yeah, Michael Jackson, it's yeah. really high, high, beautiful. Wow, awesome. So you actually produced the entire album in your home studio? Uh, yes, um, my, my whole home is a, a music studio. So I got an isolation booth and a whole living room is a control room uh, type setup. So aside from that, I've been producing other people as much as I can beside my own project just to get a feel of how to, you know, how to, how to work with someone's idea that they may not be able to, to know how to play piano or guitar, but suck it out of their mind and put it in there for them, you know. And so it's, it's been a growing process for myself, you know, to do the same. So, so. are you playing the real piano or it's all computerized? That's because cool. the guitar is real. Yeah. And I know you have new baby guitar. Yeah, I do. The electric one, <laughs> really pretty. I do. Um, yeah, it's all real piano. Um, if it's, sometimes it's, it's called sampling, where I'll, I have a piano but it, from the software that's led into it, I'm able to uh, play through the software into the, the recording. So there's not miking uh, per se, but a lot of my, I like to balance between what's called an analog and digital signal. Usually an analog is like that, or organic, just raw. Real. With the mic, real. Yes, yes. And then sometimes you got some synth, which you've heard probably on the album a little bit. So you know, it's, it's always a, a growing thing amongst producers and musicians that, you know, oh, they use computer stuff versus uh, it's raw acoustic talent so I tried to balance those two but you know hearing for example Britney Spears on tour it sounds to me like it's just everything is playback yeah. everything is lip sync but yeah. you are real oh, so you. that's beautiful that you can sound good on a studio version but also in reality yeah. now thank this you. time she helped you so she did I don't know if I will believe you that this is all your voice <laughs> 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 well so with this creativity bursting out of you what's your next project? What's your plan for the future? Uh, well, I, I'm really big into using art to inspire good movements in the world. You know, it seems to be that I personally think that art's going to save the world. You know, I mean, there's nothing better than seeing a beautiful painting or listening to someone's voice sometimes as art, you know. Uh, each one of us carries an artistic talent. Some mm -hmm. of us choose to dive down that path a little deeper than others, but um, I, I try to do my best to attach my, my music that's, I, I, I don't, I try not to equate it as my music, 
You know, it's just music that's come into this world, and I feel the need to share it. And uh, perhaps recently, um, I've had a few Is friends. Is this copyrighted, your music? Yes. Then it's yours. Yes. <laughs> Well, but it's, you know, I, I don't like to sound egoic or ego, egotistical about it, you know, I mean, it's just, I, I try to give out as many of the songs as I can to support causes. For instance, uh, I had a friend recently who uh, was, he works for a Gerson uh, Institute in assisting in people curing cancer, and so he was needing money raised for that. So put up a YouTube video, hey guys, go to my website, get a free download of a song. Even if you don't donate, just share my link. That's all I ask, you know. Mm -hmm. Those types of things, just bringing awareness to people that are in pain or the Japan thing. Yes. And I got a, a link up on my website right now, you know, to uh, for screenshots for anybody on iPhones. Uh, I know donating is can kind of be a, a sketchy thing sometimes, you know. We don't know if someone's playing us, or if they're scamming us or whatnot. So I personally donated $10 to the Red Cross um, uh, for the Japan's relief and took screenshots on my iPhone and put it up on my website and said, hey guys, look, I just did it. It's real. Yes. Um, please just share this link. And oh, by the way, here's one of my songs from, from iTunes available for your free yes. download. So yeah. um, that's, where, that's where I'm going with this is trying to create things out of thin air, a song that inspires people to, to do good to each other. You know? So Very the beautiful. 60s are still alive. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are actually rolling around in that second time. Yeah, I, I completely agree yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really just beautiful to see people come together after disasters or tough mm. times. Or, mm. so. it's, it's just going to get better. That's what I really believe. You may call me Pollyanna, but, you know, hey, I uh, like no. it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, it's the only way it can go, yeah. you know. Yes, and uh, your personal plans for the future? With the music, no music, teaching children? Um, uh, my, my personal plans, my music, I didn't think it'd ever get to this level of you know, uh, with, with, whether it's friends or family, just inspire me to, to push out music onto iTunes. I never thought I'd get to this point. So, I mean, the sky's the limit, but what I personally want to do is, is keep uh, being raw with myself about the music. I mean, that's where the music comes from. You know, those moments in life when you're tough or you're confused or you're highly happy, you know. And in those moments, I, um, it's a, I think it's an artist is always trying to capture that emotion in a, in a, in a work so that people can view it or listen to it. And uh, uh, the future plans, I got a, an EP, a four song EP that will be released uh, roughly. What is EP? Uh, extended play. What is that? Uh, after you release a, an album, uh, typically to, in order to just um, uh, generate more interest or just more music, give music to your fans or whatever, you generate like a four song EP. So it's not like an artist will come out with an album and then two years later they come out with another album. They can release an album and then in a year, release a four-song EP to keep people, hey, we're still out here oh, together. Oh, I see, I see, so, I see. So roughly early May, a uh, four-song EP on iTunes will be available. Nice. Um, so you have them already? Yeah, they're pretty much, I had, I, have a, I had a stock of about 25 songs that were completely finished. I've just been geeking out for years, recording this stuff, and I finally hunkered down and, and put the 12 songs on, on the album that's on iTunes right now. Yes. So. so one more question before we close. Why Faint the Pleasing? Okay. Um, that's on track one of my song. There's a lyric line. It was a poem I wrote when I was on a military deployment about a woman I missed, and, or imagining it. And it was, the lyric line goes, This moment's so beautiful it could faint the pleasing. Once seized, now teased are these moments of feeling your heart beating. You're and a little Monty guy. Yeah, I am. Like, I'm romantic. Oh. <laughs> but, um, uh, but that, to me, it's a kind of a play on words, but when you break it down beyond its artistic talent, it has too much play, but faint the pleasing. To me, I imagine that the word, like if someone faints, it's an, an extended or an over-exaggerated feeling. You know, some people faint from anger, uh, elation, whatever the case. Yeah. But I want people to, I wanted my music to be so good that people would faint. Oh, yeah. cool. So, like in the time of so Beatles. They may be, yeah, exactly. Alice they might Bruce be. Lee. Yeah, so they might be pleased, but I want them to faint from the pleasing, you know? Nice. Like, I want them to, to listen to the music and have it move them so much. So it's kind of play on words, a little nice. word play. So. Nice. I want to pl faint from pleasing, too. There you go. Not faint like we from, all do. You know, oh, shock, I got a phone bill. Oh, no. Exactly. <laughs> Don't talk so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you, team. Thank you. And I want to see you on the big stages. I hope so. Awards and... <laughs> Good. Thank you so much. See you next time for another slice of a delicious pie of life 
and look for Joe on iTunes, on Facebook, everywhere. He's everywhere. Just faint. That's the message. And live the